Um, both of you guys are going to say Trump can't win, so I don't know who's going to argue with whom on this, but uh, let, let me start with you, Steve. I, I would say at this point, and there's a big piece by Jerry Seib, uh, some of Sanders' uh, criticism it, it could be hurting Hillary with independence uh, at this point. At least that's the thrust of the piece. Are you worried about that? Well, I mean, the tone of the campaign on the Democratic side has certainly gotten nastier. And there is some concern about the kinds of uh, things Bernie Sanders is saying and whether those are going to be um, recirculated in the general election. But you know, ultimately, the election will be a choice between two candidates. And uh, Hillary Clinton, when that choice is made, actually looks a lot better than Donald Trump or Ted Cruz, as a NBC poll shows. So a little concern about the Sanders campaign and the negative tone. But uh, in the general election, I think Democrats right now are feeling pretty good. Steve, do you think that We've made this point a few times. When we know who the president is uh, in 2016 and, and wh whomever it is takes office, 50 percent of the country is going to just have a, viser a visceral, I hate to use the word hate, but uh, right. a, a deep dislike of whoever the, the president is. That's unfortunate, I think, for us as, as a country. You think eventually we'd start liking Hillary if it's her? Well, I mean, I, I think politics today is polarized, and, and the, you see that in the polls that you're looking at. And, and politicians today, establishment politicians in particular, just aren't very popular with voters, and Hillary Clinton is no exception. I think at the end of the day, you know, uh, America has problems to solve, and it, we only have one president at a time. It's either going to be Hillary or Donald Trump or, or, or Bernie Sanders or, or probably Ted Cruz. And, uh, and, you know, at some point, you know, Congress and the president are going to have to decide whether or not they want to solve problems or keep fighting and uh, drive the partisan divide even further. I, I, I suspect and I hope um, that if Hillary Clinton is the president, she's going to actually reach out. She's got a history in the Senate of working across the aisle, mm -hmm. and I'm hopeful that she'll do that as president so, as well. Sarah, at this point, I, I, you know, I, I don't know if I'd refer to you as an establishment Republican, but I, I've talked to, to you and others about you know, you have a hand that, that's dealt, and, you know, so you just heard what your hand is. It's not a five-card hand. It's a four-card hand. Yeah, right. Yeah, and you got Bernie Sanders, <laughs> Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, and Ted Cruz. So what are you doing? You just, you're out of here on this card game, and you're going home and, and just thinking about Mitt Romney or something? What, what, what do you, what do, you well, do? Well, I think, look, there's still a lot to play out in the Republican uh, primary process. Donald Trump, you know, should pick up. 80 delegates tonight in New York, and he'll have a big night, but uh, he probably comes up about 60, maybe 70 delegates short at the convention. And then the question is, is Cruz really organized enough to get it on the second or the third ballot? And if that's the case, he will, in fact, be the nominee, which I think is probably the most likely bet at this point. Hmm. Uh, uh, but if he doesn't, uh, then I think all hell's going to break loose. And uh, anything at that point could happen. And there's all this chatter about the Rules Committee and what that means. And you know, people forget the Rules Committee can meet throughout the week and change the rules if, if it's uh, required uh, to do so to move the... But doesn't all help The second the Rules Committee meets, yeah, the whole it, game sure. is... Sure. It, it, it's going to be a really rough and tumble summer for Republicans. No matter how this plays out, it's just going to be a really bad... Okay, so, so they settle on Cruz as enough. This just for argument's sake, because it could be Trump just as easily. But they said all on Cruz, will you have a full-throated defense in, uh, of, of Ted Cruz? Will you canvas for him? Sure. Will, you, will you vote for him? I'll vote for Ted Cruz for sure. I used to work with Ted. Uh, Ted is a very bright and capable person. Um, you know, there's been a lot of discussion about his personality and his relationship with colleagues. And leaving that aside, you know, the average voter doesn't pay attention to those things. They don't right. know the ins and outs of what happens in uh, Washington. Uh, and Ted is a conservative. I think his rhetoric is wrong on some issues, but he is largely in line with previous nominees of the Republican Party, aside from his rhetoric, particularly on immigration. Uh, he's a conservative. Uh, he, he'll have a tough time beating Hillary Clinton in this economy, frankly, as would any Republican right now, I think, and given where President Obama's approval rating is. Uh, it's lining up uh, strongly for the Democrats, but it is early. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'd be happy to support Ted Cruz. Uh, he's not my first or second choice, but I would enthusiastically vote <laughs> for him. Or your third. Well, that's weird because, uh, I don't know, they, a lot of people talk about the economy as not lining up for, necessarily, for the incumbent. And, and also, when we were, I guess, at 47 or 46 on the president's popularity, right. that that portended 
So a couple of points makes a difference where you think that no Republican could win at this point? Well, I, I, think, I think if uh, John Kasich's strategy to, you know, win the hearts and minds of delegates on the floor because he's in the race works, he's a strong candidate against her. He, in fact, he beats her in many polling, uh, many polls. Uh, I think there's other young dynamic candidates in the Republican Party that would, given her unpopularity, you know, where you could see a situation, you know, uh, emerge where a Republican beats her, even in a... I mean, there's mixed signals on the economy. You talk about them all the time on this program. Right. But overall, you know, the consumer confidence has, you know, has trended upward over the last several months. And, and that usually means the incumbent party wins. Um, I, guess I don't see the, the, uh, the John Kasich. Um, I don't see how that works. I, I mean, it, the John Kasich, J Jim Gilmore... Jim uh, Gilmore. <laughs> he's still in. He's still in the Rubio, race. Rubio's yeah. out of the race. He's got more delegates than Kasich. How are he you he look does. At, it's very narrow. How are you going to face going to go to... But when Kasich points out that Trump doesn't have 60% of the... You know, 60% Republicans don't, you know, don't right. support him. 95% of Republicans right. haven't supported Kasich. Look, it's a very, very narrow path. And, and the, you know, the, the interesting thing for Kasich right now is like he almost needs... Wire, that he, narrow path. It, it, it's a, it is. I mean, I don't disagree with what you're yeah, saying. It's a, you know, we're talking about, you know, scenarios here that are right. unlikely, but, but, you know, yeah, but and, possible. And I, I just made another, the other point. You know, Kasich keeps bringing up the, the general election polls. Bernie Sanders beats everybody, including, you know, it beats by wider margins than Hillary. But yeah. so general election polls at this point in time Paul are Ryan. almost, Paul Ryan. They're, the, like popular, they're like popularity the, contests. They are, so. they are largely meaningless, but yeah. uh, the contours of the race and the general election are being set right now. Yeah. And they're being set now because of where the economy sits. They're being set now because of what's happening in these primaries. And it has been a race to the bottom. And as it relates to John Kasich, the only path for him uh, which is very right. narrow, is that Donald Trump and Ted Cruz basically get to parity, and neither of them get enough. Right. And then they deadlock on the floor. And then when the, then if that happens, which, um, you know, again, I think Ted is the most likely scenario at this point, but if it were to deadlock on the floor, all hell's going to break loose, and then anything can happen. And he at least has the argument that I'm in the race. I'm running. I've been running. Right. Well, yeah, 16 guys have. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Steve... I'd yes. almost, I'd like, I, I actually did have a moment of, of clarity where I said, you know, I can't worry about this anymore. I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to become, I'm going to switch, I'm going to become a, a limousine liberal. I've got mine. What do I care if we do any of these programs? You're things? welcome. You're always yeah. welcome. Yeah, I party. know you left the lights on for me to, to come in, but That's right. if I were, I would look across the aisle and I'd just be laughing at, at when I've seen so many establishment Republicans just throw in the towel and say, you know, it's going to be Hillary. Let's just try and... Let's just try and keep the Senate, you know, maybe. I, I mean, uh, uh, you just chuckle when you see that, don't you? You must love this, that they're well, ready to take their ball and go home and not even, not even play in this, because it's Trump, they, who, and, well, they, I, who they feel worse about than Hillary. Yeah, and, and they don't seem to like Ted Cruz very much no, more. No, they don't. Um, <laughs> it's funny. It's you know, like, what happened? I'm going to give a shout-out to Larry Sabato, who's a professor at the University of Virginia who writes a great uh, little piece um, called The Crystal Ball, and he... According to his analysis, if the Democratic performance, if the Democratic vote goes up one point nationwide, Democrats pick up nine congressional seats. If it goes up two, they pick up like 35. And if it goes up three points, just three points, the Democrats would pick up 56 seats. So you're going to hear a lot more Republicans who are going to start saying, we, we have to let the presidency go and worry about right. <clears throat> this, excuse me, the Senate and the House. Because if Larry Sabato and his numbers are right, and he's a very good political scientist, um, you know, you're gonna, you could be looking at some down ballot uh, problems for and, Republicans that are pretty I think extreme. that's the difference between Trump and Cruz. Trump probably costs us much more than, than Ted does. Ted, Ted may lose to Hillary, uh, but I don't think he's going to cost us the House and probably not the Senate. You, but the, uh, yes. but Trump would, right, place, Sarah? Sarah. I, I think Trump, at this point, you, you based on the numbers, Prado. Trump would cost us at least the Senate. You're in a dark place. You're in a dark place. <laughs> I, I, I don't know it's what sad. I can do to help the you. The latest general election I saw was Clinton 46, Cruz 44. Yeah. So. Well, that's no, what that's she, I mean, that's but within that, a margin of error. Yes, and it's also months and months away yeah, from what we've even chosen. All right, but. Steve and Sarah, um, thank you.